Good evening. Um, I wanted to say thank you to the Art Bar um, for having me read um, during this sort of very challenging and difficult time. This feels like a live theater performance in my home. And um, it's been quite the task. Um, so I'm gonna be reading on behalf of the Art Bar's um, Italian Night uh, with some other features. Um, and I, before I begin with a series of poems, I just want to express um, my gratitude uh, to have this opportunity. It's my first live online reading of the year. And uh, I'll be reading from some poetry from a few of my books. I also will be reading some prose and uh, unpublished work that I'm currently working on. And to begin, I'm going to start with an a land acknowledgement uh, for, on behalf of the First Nations. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to um, what was done before Treaty 13 and what existed before 1805 with Treaty 13. Um, I know that it's been a very difficult and challenging time. I have a poem that I would like to read with this. Um, so the, before I begin, I just wanted to, like the city of Toronto, basically acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of many nations, um, Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee, and the Métis, um, the Chippewa, Wendat peoples. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that we stay in tune with that, even though we're celebrating Italian night, that we're all people that are um, coming from another place. Um, and we're coming here as colonizers with our own experience of identity loss and loss of home. And uh, there are many others out there that are going through the same thing. I'm gonna read to you a poem that uh, I feel resonates with the opening here. Uh, it's part of my second book with Guernica Editions, titled Flesh. Uh, the um, poem is Sizzle the Cold Earth. The garden has a cold cucumber and a wilting tomato that no longer grows before the now twilight, 6 p.m., when the sun commanded the arrival of an autumnal wind, I wanted us to take a barefoot walk, salient to the senses, in the neighborhood park, feel a touch of vanishing warmth on our cheeky smiles, a sweet nearby before the chill starts a chat. There's no sense in evading it. There's a bottle of Amarone red at my hip and tea tree oil for our bare feet. Minty cool earth conversation, frisk skins, a cotton sack that's black with words, a line drawing of a woman, round and nude. Let's deal with it. We're getting, we're going cold, wild. Dig it, dude. The day is not long gone, sizzle the cold earth. This true north, strong and free, that's what I long to find some crisp, inhuman chill where the lungs go shrill and the first peoples laugh because we haven't got a clue how to make both blood and breath a toast to soul. 
So I'll be reading uh, some poems. I'll start with Flesh. Flesh was published in 2018. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the Akashic Wood. The wood belongs to the father, Kate Greenstreet. And now we roam in sovereign woods, and now we hunt the doe. And every time I speak for him, Emily Dickinson. Father Forensic, you won't say your name, only I am that I am. Why should we hurry home? But how to live that way? Why love anything? Sprawling steel fences, 40 years rustine, aligned to 1969 and 1971. Homeland security found mapped in farm divisions. The mob of WAP is foot dipped in concrete. A CN tower erect, late her comes its colossal open dome. I am not wanted tongue tasting the cedars, sweet potato squashed placenta, Samnite princess coagulating home, a panino and a salted dried prosciutto, late night bonomelli chamomile tea, omega motherland can't love, alpha fatherland won't love, but you love everything singing oracular to saints. I stand in airports collecting three carts, lugging luggage to customs with cheese and customs is customs before 9-11, wandering in and out of visitations to waterfalls, Niagara, Smiths, Chippewa, Iguazu, Kagawag, America's fatherland. Forgotten olive tongues, tenderized moose, dead duck dinners, loonied identity squawking, a verbose cult of culture, seven biblical days in a psychiatric hospital, a tower above treaty, dome without roof. The drive to Thunder Bay clicks with rubber wheels over cement roads. I vibrate like an oboe ring above highway pelts. No highway tars smooth under the Chevy Oldsmobile 79. The bubbled fermenting wine trunk clucks like we are in a basement. Anglers angled to the doe kill. Rifle shots in Winchester walnut steel. 22 barrel Kimber rifled. Where is the skating rink on a hunter's campsite? No pardons once the horned moose calls a wild birch bark cylinder song. That's not going to change, the stench of wild innards, wet fur skins adjacent to cantina, wine sweat, fur trade, taxidermies, watching the native squalor, American spelling. Strega had claimed me from the 18th year of Levi's jeans Baby denim wash, corrupt slave cotton, mounted moose antlers, stuffed deer heads, ducking ducks in glassed cabinets, damned forest hunt, parlay. Parlay, console the dead, a taxidermist can't mount in the Akashic wood. That's where you are, freeze framed in oak armoires. The charming chimes of a grandfather clock my mausoleum museum parlor, American spelling. So just to uh, expand on that poem, The Akashic Wood, which is uh, a large part of the theme in this particular book, I'm going to go into a section of the book that um, is titled... Just a moment here. Field notes from a taxidermist's daughter. What is animal memorabilia? 
I remember ducks in the dryer. I remember wet birds, sometimes guts and pails or glad garbage bags. I remember mounted voices speaking in tongues from the basement. I remember wood slats waiting for varnish. I remember squashed grapes lived separate in the cantina, never mixed with feathers. I remember the freezer keeping meat. A butcher stalks his rocks of flesh for the feast. I remember playing Persephone hiding from Hades in a basement. I remember smells of sleigh in the game. I remember Papa Moose reclining in the sofa and throning it as his own. I remember arguments with antlers, the smug faux Mona Lisa between them. I remember they enjoyed our after school conversations. I remember fish flapping in my fingers. I remember the flipped canoe losing a sneaker to the bottom of the lake. I remember swimming with dragged aluminum. A whale is hunched over my back. I remember uncles smelly, salty, sweaty, and loud. I remember the doorbell, the master's butcher knives flying around, up and down. I remember the big fish, Pisces. Dad liked to scream. I remember the smelts furious in the kitchen sink. I remember making friends with turtles in the backyard. I remember the swish of a bloodied garage. I remember mischief in the Van Dura. I don't remember the automatic shift into drive. I remember rolling forward from the driveway, stopped in a horizontal park. The middle of you, a trophy, my downward road. I remember dad shouting at the kids in late summer heat. I remember meeting Polyhymnia's ghost at the veranda. I remember her applauding an ace of cups, amusing the beast. What is taxidermy? Not including killing, cutting, gutting, skinning, remove any natural skin habitat, hair, eyes, or such features from the specimens and place each flesh figure over an artificial standing body made of wood chucks or shavings. Some use hay squeezed or entangled shaped like footballs with wire for stuffing. Remember to have plenty of plastic eyes and pins. Two, the specimen is reproduced completely with man-made materials. Wipe down gently before skinning, then clean, let dry before stuffing. Mount bird feet or put antlers, legs, or paws into position. Three, taxidermy is not a modern practice, though it has adopted modern techniques. It is a craft in which carpenters, wood specialists, rangers, and sportsmen advise where the final pose is a sculpted body. An artifice surfaces. Its authenticity comes with embalming, tanning, molding, and casting. With a good warm washing, put together washed out dead animals, wet in warm water, where all evidence of disease or infection to the human eye is disposed of. The fur, the skin, the flesh that remains must be dried, blow dried, laid flat to dry with an electric heater, in the oven, or even in a dryer. All the organs are stuffed out, sucked out, and all fatty tissues are disposed of. Because the most obvious part of the animal, of a moose head, are its antlers, and the hide becomes an enhanced aesthetic softening to the human eye. This surface becomes the trophy, a trope of pride and potential for the hunter's freeze frame of time. Sketches, though they come before posing, are like the poet's revisions. An afterlife is created. Part five, the inserted eyes are made from glass. The eyelids are sculpted from clay, but I've never seen this in my father's workstation. 
The noses and mouths are made of clay or wax, sometimes shined, somehow hardened with a transparent sealer kin to varnish. I've seen epoxy containers used for shaping mouths. The inside form is made with foam, polyurethane, or plywood threads sawed up for stuffing. I've seen these bound up roundish like a ball of elastics. As for birds, wires and styrofoam hold together the insides, or as noted above, footballs of shredded wood strips in place of guts. Part six, lake fish, sometimes ocean species, are completely gutted and made with nothing real except fragments of the scale-like skin. It's important to use gloves. My father doesn't always follow the rules. He's found his own way of doing things and I've heard him arguing with my uncle that various techniques aren't savvy, what aren't savvy when handling the carcass to preserve the outer layers of skin, hide, feathers, or scales. Seven, the standard taxidermy kit consists of special wiring and threads for markings are precisely cut to make tags. These hold up wings, legs, and all the various parts of the empty hole to adjust into position. The final stages of standing are combined with inserting pins as support over sanded, fancy maple, birch, or oak slats, cut and varnished as a base for the sculpted specimen to hold its pose. The smell of taxidermy is truly harrowing, more so than watching these skins lying around. Its stench is a bizarre concoction of all of the above in various stages. Varnish over skin and wet hide. There are all sorts of tools, screws, pliers, miniature hammers, an assortment of knives and little scissors. I call taxidermy a surgical procedure for the dead, a morgue-like ceremony that evades any necessity for burial. A rebirth, is it mere showmanship? Because it is so ostentatious and bizarre for one as conflicted as myself, the stuffed armadillo that lives dead alive, shipped from Argentina, has become one of the few I actually enjoy. I'm gonna read a poem that I wrote uh, in um, the style of Petrarch. Um, it's rumored, but, uh, or known, mummification and taxidermy are sort of similar. The idea of preserving or trying to keep something alive that essentially is a complete carcass and it's dead. Um, so I, there's been rumors that Petrarch himself did this, but that's something we're unable to prove. In Italy right now, there is uh, the home of Petrarch. There is a mummified cat which you can view that was put inside one of the walls after uh, Petrarch died, someone got a hold of this cat and they set it up um, on display. So it's a very famous um, uh, sort of like a gallery viewing that you can go and see uh, where Petrarch is from. So this is called Petrarch's Cat, sometimes Laura. A poet is a time mechanic, not an embalmer. Jack Spicer. Dear friend, bring with you not a prowl, but the tender love of a pacifist into the salon where I house my pen. Dreams of her come with tears I pluck from my heart to wail, oh, carissima. Blessed are your purrs in the quiet, darkest night. Stars are a closer proximity when affection is caught from death's mystery. 
I have wept watching the trophy on this desk. You return to me every afternoon or evening. How can I forget you here, frozen, forever blessed? We cannot know eternity without love, her whispers, your whiskers, and a warm caress, both beauty and faith. The greater flames that burn the heart's passions are the cause of my soul's unrest. Yet when I look on you, I dare to scribble these tender verses in wild abandon to ink, exiled from heaven's rest. So that's a sort of sonnet, a sonetto taken from Petrarch's uh, style of the troubadours expressing love. Um, Laura was uh, the great love of Petrarch. He was, um, he exalted her. And uh, as that Italian poet, I wanted to write um, a witty poem where he's expressing his uh, undue admiration for this mummified cat and how in his mind he's sort of mummified uh, Laura as well. Um, even though we don't really know her from what notes there are of her through history. Um, so I'm going to read now Canto for a Cameo Trailblazer. The pine needles fall like an axe in the forest. Can you hear them crumble? Jack Spicer. In a quest for the quiet, low-carved ivory bond, a ring carrying a cameo of colonial penitence among a consecrated Catholic earth, I shapeshift to become him, a fanatic fan for the West, the benign exotic trailblazer, a spoor in foreign-er forests, a novel tramp adopting hooves, the wider wild. He gives me the gift of the Piscean, the fabulist, the dreamer, a subject of Neptune's fantasist. Because I walk through these alien branches, I have scratched out my heart to become the familiar territory. So that the old grapevine talks with broken leaves of birch deciding to become deciduous, so that her grapes exchange priory where the virgin ingenue sleeps and the excellence of Juno's marriage to the handsome cypress, the taller phallic, comes to converse with jack pines in frost. Tracking the slab, no stone sidewalks as if cement were the advance to the Akashic wood to blaze the edges of trails, I hear the moon groan, her still orbit above urban lampposts by night, the flatter lakeshore city sewage pouts, missing its stars. This is where I am left. The remainder is a thousand years as Diana's warrior returned to great and greet a concrete, mathematic, God's arm strong in space. He repairs fabled epics for physics, appeases the mind, its perpendicular grids and trysts, latitude, longitude. I awaken here to recall the smell of ripe acorns, dried needles, rotten twigs, crumbling into groves, spreading their hardened brown seeds, the spines depraved of green light, frisking in the wind to fortune by way of ground zero, gathering their sum and sod from composed clusters into compost. They oppose the intaglio of my human imprint. I touch these cameos, carving my sight and sense become the gem-like stone background reborn into a new canto.
I'm going to um, read, uh, let's see here, if I could uh, find another poem that uh, has a little bit of, um, I have another section in here called greenings uh, or the greening heart. And um, this one is called uh, Camaraderie. It was uh, written, um, I had gone to um, Northern Ontario near Lake Temiskaming um, and it was the weekend, it was a, a long weekend in June um, celebrating uh, Quebec's uh, 400th anniversary. This is called Camaraderie for Julie. The quiet fleur-de-lis sprouting a warning of the sovereign knot, my knotted francophone friend bearing her necklace, its charm, this 400th weekend, 24th of June. Marie de Medici isn't eager to cross these icy skins, our lapping ocean and rivers that hide poison ivy in spring. Among fern ghettos over granite, over ore, shield shelved into rock, this greener ground, jewels of silver, amber, quartz, cast under Champlain's shores, Temiskaming and Ville Marie. Our kindred Bovine spirits, wilderness, Miss Buffalo exiled, reproducing nil, we while, trampling trilliums, frayed grass flowers align between province and providence. In blood, we draw iron from these plants that seep it out of soil. We are diagnosed with mineral deficiency. Our teeth and bones, once coral, now white, the ovaries turned to fluorite. I'm gonna leave flesh. Uh, if you wanna know a little bit more about it, I did get a review, it's online with the Quill Inquirer, the November 2018th issue. Um, so you can just do a search uh, for um, an, in the Quill Inquirer for flesh. What I'd like to do is um, read some poems that were published about a year ago now. Um, I like to think of them as love poems, uh, but uh, you can take away from them what you will. Um, here we have, uh, these were published in the Thames Review, issue nine, Vice of Love, after Basquiat. Should it fall out, some screw? Should it loosen? What would be left to make it work? Chew or gnaw in place of the regular opening between the sharp metal clamp and the object of their affection held strong. The sigh and the saliva of love seeps out like a dirtied used up oil, keeps us tightly wound and warm. We pull well put together. Enter a muse. My key is turned from its lock. I am waiting for God, not you, entering in a leathery epidermis, doubled skin, the yellow beige jacket hiding methanol in vain. You told me it was a trick from the crow on the other side of town. These are countable lies. Why do we do it? What's not good for us is spreading everywhere but the bed. This is not I who enters. Here is another I summoned. Once I had a friend whose name was Aphrodite. All ready to drown in some body's fresh lake I dive to the bottom of slippery rocks and strange sand, 
my blame. What hasn't been rescued from this personality's pit? Waited, all of it. I have held my breath for you, friend. I kicked into our waters, breathless, because I gave you the greater service. I listened to your voice. Let in the Troia, waited, all of it. I have held for you, friend. Become the torn wise woman who was supposed to win over the whims of a dick sweating in heat. Standing at the bluffs, waited, all of it. I have held for you, friend. O oh, goddess, what have your lovers brought? The forward walk of aging feet, my waning away from your beauty, once singing at us, blending voices, the lusts we thought, these are mine to hold. Weedling. I am the finite vestibule, having eaten my seed head, releasing exhaustion, flowering for spring. My children blow what is left of me, the veins of Milky Way, my head weightless, my seeded presence a disease to the blade that cuts me. Dandelion, weed, grow, stem and stain. I have my own way of cheating. Everybody does. So, um, 